Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. And I, I got to tell you, I don't think it, ever in my wildest dreams that I think we'd be here doing what we're doing right now. But what it's a, it's just it, it's such a huge, huge deal for Indiana and for the for for for, for our profession. Uh, Director Tim Horty, Deputy Director Jenny Foltz, off to the left. You know, Tim came on a couple of years ago at a time when 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 we, we were right in the middle of real systemic change, and. He and his staff have really grabbed a hold of this idea, this notion, at a time when we didn't think there was any probability of success. As we endured and got, got through the initial start of COVID, throughout that entire process, we just didn't think we'd be standing here. But I also think everyone agree, agrees that, that this profession is at a crossroads. And we have got to look at the future of law enforcement training differently than we ever have before. And I'm, I'm so proud of Tim and the ways he, he's able to do that. Scenario-based training is going to be critical to our success, not the academic learning environment necessarily. So thinking about the way we do this in a different way. To the legislators uh, and, and members of the General Assembly, uh, geez, Representative Shackelford and uh, Representative Steerwald, that list can go on and on and on of all of those that said yes, yes, we, we, we do think change needs to, needs to occur here. And, and here in Indiana, we're going to invest in that infrastructure to support public safety. Um, I'd be remiss not talk about my boss, the governor of the great state of Indiana, who has never not been available to us and completely understands the dynamic associated with all that we see, all that we deal with, all that we do, all we're expected to be, but he doesn't expect us to be superhuman. He knows we're human beings. And this is a really good start, a bipartisan start to what we can do in Indiana to be a model for this nation. And I'm confident, I'm confident that's what's going to happen over time. So don't need to listen to me anymore. I think the important thing is that you hear from um, some of the folks that really made this possible. And we're gonna start with the guy that I work for. Um, his name is Eric Holcomb. Well, thank you, uh, Superintendent, and good afternoon to, to one and all. It's certainly a honored to be here today with what you see uh, behind me, but it's really surrounding me all over the state of Indiana. It's that unanimous bipartisan support that Superintendent Carter just spoke about in our legislature. Uh, when you think about where we started and where we arrived at, at the end of the day with a standing ovation, uh, quite a feat. And there were many that said it couldn't be done, but we proved here in the state of Indiana that we can take on tall challenges and emerge on the other side in a much better position. And that's exactly what we did with the enhancements that are going to occur here at the Indiana Law Enforcement Academy by passing 1006. This is just a critically important step. I would dare say long overdue uh, to make sure that the folks who are called to this profession are resourced appropriately, have access to the training and to the equipment that they need when they leave their front door in the morning to go to work, that they come home as well. And to think about how we got here, a lot of people to think, you see some standing here, but I think there's one person but for his efforts, and I'll get to some others as well, but for Representative Sturwald, and I don't want to overlook the Speaker of the House, Todd Houston is here, and the legislative leaders, but for, without Greg Sturwald's cool and calm demeanor, his intellect, his humility, his ability to listen to so many different points, valid, coming from different places, different perspectives, different backgrounds, in a time when a lot of people, quite frankly, were saying, are you biting off more than you can chew? Are you going somewhere where this is high stakes, it may not materialize? And but for his efforts and his ability, again, to be able to fine tune and adjust along the way, and then to have a teammate like Robin Shackelford to have a real teammate every step of the way, 
who was able to, at the moment we needed it most, bring in diverse communities and perspectives and be able to advance to again arriving at this day where I just simply couldn't be prouder of both of your efforts and then all the support that you had along the way. This is, this is another example of Indiana setting the standard and a lot of other states with the FOP earlier this morning, 5,000 strong in, in that room. A lot of other states looking to Indiana, asking how did you do this during a time like that, and making sure that the 70 million reasons and upgrades that are going to occur here are not just worth it, but they're going to lead to making sure these folks again feel safe when they leave the door so I want to I want to thank everyone that had a hand in this to it's not just historic this was timely and this is one of those life and death pieces of legislation that's going to make a difference for years to come with that I will pitch the microphone over to Greg Sturwald who really needs no introduction, but Greg, thank you again for all those delicate discussions that you managed. It wasn't January through the end of session. It was long before that that set up this successful moment. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Governor and Superintendent Carter. What a great day for Indiana as we show the nation that we can take a delicate, sensitive, and potentially divisive issue and work on it and pass some truly historic legislation in a bipartisan fashion. I want to thank my original co-authors, uh, Representative McNamara and Representative Bartels, and especially thanks to Representative uh, Robin Shackelford for joining the team. We truly appreciate it, and uh, your support was vital to the success of 1006. We ended up with uh, 90 some co authors, but those were the original ones who got on board with me. Uh, and I, I want to emphasize that on legislation such as this that we have already discussed, we went through every committee in the House and every committee in the Senate and every floor vote. I counted over 200 votes and not a single negative vote. So I think that speaks for uh, the great people of the state of Indiana. And what a great day to celebrate and recognize those who choose to serve and protect. I can't emphasize enough that we would not be here today without their support. They gave me their time, their expertise, and their support. We had so many discussions starting last summer and fall. We met over Zoom, we met in person, and they were so great to help me guide this legislation. You know, I met with all of them individually, and then we, from the uh, Superintendent Carter and the State Police Alliance, the FOP and the Chiefs of Police and the Sheriff's Association, and the members of the Indiana Law Enforcement Academy here behind us. Uh, and they, they truly amazed me that, that they were willing to give so much time uh, to me to manage this truly historic piece of legislation. We had those discussions and there were three major topics that were gleaned from all those months of discussions. One of them being every, every agency emphasized to me, they said, Greg, everything begins with training. If you have the proper training, everything flows from that. So that's why we're here today. They also emphasized to an agency that said, we can handle the truth. We want transparency. So that's why in the state budget, we have a grant program for tar and body cams for those local agencies who do not presently have them. And lastly, they all were supportive of dealing with somebody who everybody agrees they probably should not be in law enforcement. So they were beyond belief 
and they were patient with me, uh, the discussions we had, and the questions I had, they took the time to answer in great detail. We had 15, 20 different iterations of, of this bill, and when we finally got it done, as you know, no negative votes and no amendments, and it's all due to their efforts. So uh, let me express my uh, everlasting gratitude and, and uh, thanks to law enforcement for their support in making this day possible. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you to all the advocates who never gave up for this change to happen. Whether you were marching in the streets, drafting emails, making calls, meeting with leaders, or proudly serving the community in your uniform, we appreciate you. House Bill 1006 was definitely change our Indiana criminal justice system forever. And as we move forward, I would like you to know that this is just one step in the Indiana Black Legislative Caucus's pursuit for full reform of our justice system. As we enter into the future, let the past be a lesson. For years, police brutality and harassment have plagued the black and brown community. House Bill 1006 is our way of saying no more. As public servants, we serve our communities and not harm them. I'm glad that the Governor Holcomb, Representative Sturwald, leaders of the House and Senate, and my colleagues in the General Assembly agreed that something had to change. This journey has been one of edification for our community, and I am forever grateful that it has been so for me as well. As we take our step until tomorrow, let us keep this energy and passion for change. For the road is difficult and long, but if we have faith in the fight, we shall persevere. Thank you all and God bless.